with survivorship life. You can say, okay, what would make me feel fulfilled? What would make sure that my legacy is honored and they're going to have a great head start for their business, their life, their retirement? Maybe my grandkids will get college education out of it. What's that number that I want to make sure they leave? You can just pick that number with SGUL. You can just go, okay, look, I got two kids. I have four grandkids. I want to make sure they get a million dollars. Great. I'm going to carve off maybe, you know, 1% or 2% of my interest from this account. That's going to fund the SGUL. They're going to get that million dollars. And guess what that does for us now? Now that opens a different kind of conversation. You can put that fear and rest to bed. They're going to get that money. Now you can liberate some of those other assets to spend and enjoy with them and make memories and not just focus on the financial part. I see. So in your example there on the, on the, if we use that same one from earlier about you know, yeah. someone in their seventies, 12 K yeah. a year, let's just say, and they get anywhere from like seven to 900,000 in death benefit. Sure. Um, touch on, I feel like I missed it. And I feel like others that are watching probably missed it as well. But maximizing sure. retirement while living, it sounded like we went into dying again. For, yeah, but, but, but that's, that's that. No, that's the that's the tug of war that happens, right? People don't spend their assets because they want to leave them to their kids. So another a way to solve that would be okay. Let's just pick a benefit we want to give our kids or our okay. grandkids, and what we'll do is we'll fund that with leverage meaning we can take small premiums to get a lot of death benefit. And that death benefit will be specifically what goes to the kids. That puts to bed that tug of war, that need to want to make sure that you're holding assets to give them. And you can now spend those assets and enjoy those assets with them. The other assets, not this itself, not the life. Right, exactly. Itself. Okay, yeah, so that's where example, I got a little confused. Okay. Yeah, so in my example, I'm saying, okay, let's say you've built some wealth and you want to leave some of that to your kids, a lot of people think you have to leave them the money or you have to leave them those assets. You don't. You can take interest from those assets, leave them a big amount of life insurance, and then that liberates a lot of those assets for you to use and spend and enjoy and, 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 and spend while, with them. While living. So while assuming, living. So assuming, let's say, a client of mine has five to seven you know, rental properties, they got their, they got their social security pension, maybe annuities, um, yep, yep. retirement accounts, right. That they're living off of now. Yep, yep. And then they're wondering how much longer can I do this? So to speak. Yep, and yep. you're saying by taking a percentage of that 401k retirement account or a percentage of the cash flow from the real estate and just use your insurability at that age, whatever you qualify mm -hmm. for to get a maximum death benefit, leveraging yep, yep. both parents, mom and dad, let's just say. Yep, yep, yep. And it's like, now that that's there, that, that, that 900 grand, that million dollar death benefit that I want to just, the number that I picked that I want to leave mm -hmm. that set, if I want to liquidate an asset, sell off a property of my seven, let's just say, yep, yep more than happy to do so I, do, I don't have that stress of worrying that if i sell this asset if i if i drain this if i pull more from the 401k that i'm not going to have anything left to pass on especially for the believers that are watching that really take to heart the idea of leaving an inheritance for your children's children that concept of legacy that you want to fulfill that Right. Yes. Um, biblically speaking, for those that have that faith and even those that don't, but just logically, they want to leave money behind. They want to leave their kids better off than what their parents left them, that sort of thing. Uh, you're, you're saying that when it comes to, like you said, when you get to 70s and 60s, and I'm witnessing it more with clients, their mm -hmm. fear, because no one ever ran the numbers with them, on actually projecting how long this money would last and not just hoping for a safe rate of return or something like that.